Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Welcome to the 2015 Teacher Workshop Series. We'll be working with Overland College students this winter to prepare some amazing videos in math, science, English, and history to help you pass your teacher certification exams. Use these videos to help you in your studies and your preparation. And if you need some extra help, attend a workshop. We're holding workshops throughout the United States in Massachusetts, in California, in New York, in Florida. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Welcome to the 2015 Teacher Workshop Series. Today we're going to be working on number 57 on the 53 Math MTEL. And we're going to go through a very common question involving um, working with linear equations and finding the x and y intercepts of linear equations. So let's start, let's first read it over, and then we'll work through some of those ideas. Alright, so let's look at number 57. It says, Use the equation below to answer the question that follows. They give us this equation. For, uh, 48x equals 12y minus 17 minus 3x. And it says, what is the x-intercept of the graph of this equation? Now we have some options. Now, this word equation pops up twice, so it's important. What type of equation is this? Ask yourself, what, what, what? What structure is it, is it in? What, what type of equation is it? Is it a quadratic equation? Is it an uh, uh, exponential equation? Is it a linear equation? Believe it or not, this one right here, if we were to rework the numbers, would form a linear equation. And all that would mean is isolating the y's on one side and the x's on the other side, and we could rework this into something that looks like y is equal to mx plus b. Whenever you see two variables, x and y, and they're not raised to any power, it's going to be some sort of linear equation. Now, linear equations form a straight line. So if we were to graph this out with an x and y axis, it would form some straight line. This is a linear equation with a negative slope. This line would go through both the x and y axes, and the point that it goes through these axes is called the intercept. Like where the line goes to the x-axis is called the x-intercept. And where the line goes to the y-axis is called the y-intercept. Now the x-intercept always has for its x and y coordinate, it always has a zero for y. So when y is zero, um, we have an x-intercept. And the y-intercept is just the opposite. For its x and y coordinates, when x is zero, will have some value for y, and that will be the y-intercept. We're going to use this understanding to help us solve these type of problems. Let's, uh, let's, let's go through one very quick strategy with the help of our Oberlin intern, Conti. Are you ready, Conti? Take it away. Help us solve this problem. Hi, Chris. We're going to talk about x and y-intercepts. A graph of an equation has an x-intercept if at any point it touches or crosses the x-axis. For any value of x at such a point, we will always have a y value of 0. A graph has a y-intercept if at any point it touches or crosses the y-axis. For any value of y, similarly, we will have an x value of 0. So to find the x-intercept of a graph, we just plug in 0 for y and solve for x. And to find the y-intercept of a graph, we plug in 0 for x and solve for y. Back to you, Chris. Okay, great. That's awesome, Conti. So what Conti just did was she gave us a real quick way to find out the x and y intercepts of a linear equation. We can find the x-intercept just by making y equal to 0. I'll rewrite my equation. 48x is equal to 12 times 0. I input the 0 into my y value, minus 17 minus 3x. Okay, 0 times 12 cancels out the 12. So I'm left with 48x is equal to negative 17 minus 3x. I want to add the 3x to both sides. And you should be doing this on a scrap sheet of paper. Doing, doing this with me, solving for x when y is 0. We get 51x, oops, 51x is equal to negative 17. Divide both sides by 51 so we can solve for x. 
Now we, we, we get an answer, it's negative 17 divided by 51. You gotta be really careful at this point and, and see if you can reduce this at all. Sometimes it's not, you don't see it immediately, but you have to anticipate these type of trick questions and you have to anticipate that these might be able to be reduced by let's say dividing both by a factor of 17. Well, if you divide the top by 17, it comes out to one, negative one. And 51 divided by 17 would get you three. So, so if we reduce this, we find out that when y is zero, x is equal to negative one third. So our x-intercept is negative one third. Now that's a really quick way of finding the x-intercept of a linear equation. Just take y and substitute in zero for y and then solve for x. If I wanted to find out the y-intercept of a linear equation, all I need to do is the same process, but this time substitute in zero for x. And if I'm finding that y-intercept, I just work this out, I get zero is equal to 12y minus 17, add the 17 to both sides, and I'd be able to solve and find the uh, y-intercept just by doing some of the same type of algebra, and I find out that y is equal to uh, 17 divided by 12. This is a good strategy on finding the x and y intercepts of linear equations. All right, team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Hope you enjoyed the problem. Thank you so much for your help, Conti. Everyone have a great day. Take care.